Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a video showing how to read price action momentum to make better trading decisions while using MarketNetflow for assistance. I plan to make several more videos discussing pre key price action concepts and how we can use options flow to help confirm what we are seeing. I want to recap a trade I tweeted about Friday morning, July 22nd, 2022, telling everyone to be on the lookout for Amazon, Microsoft, and QCOM puts. I have Amazon's chart in front of me since it was the most difficult one to trade in my opinion. Before we get started, if you'd like to get a 10% discount for Trade Edix, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. You'll also find referral links for TradingView and Top Step funded trader programs that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. I'm just going to start replaying this chart and talk about what we're seeing in terms of price action, price action momentum, which is the focus of this video. So starting out initially on the day, we start to see Amazon with some, some big red candles. Now, this is the three minute chart, which is the chart I like to trade on. And just for full disclosure, I've removed all levels that I would normally have on the chart as well as volume profile, because I just wanna focus on the price action in this video. And as you can see, as the day starts out, we're getting these long, these large candles, but we're also getting very long wicks to both the downside and the upside, indicating some massive consolidation. And as of right now, when you see this sort of price action, this is a good indication to just sit on your hands because there's really nothing that's that's easily tradable here. I mean, in theory, you could trade, you could try to catch something with these wicks, but the reality it's high risk because we don't know if it is going to push higher especially considering when we did try to push lower on this candle we just immediately get bought up so i mean as of right now there there's just nothing good to trade here now i do want to point out what's happening on market net flow real quick while we uh, see this play out if we swap over one thing that is notable is that now this is the spy chart and Amazon is a part of the S&P 500 so they are tightly correlated and actually all of the tickers I mentioned that morning are tightly correlated to spy and we see everything's flat everything's really really flat up until about 10 o'clock when we start to break away and price action on spy did start to drop but this still isn't a big enough breakaway to really act on we're looking for really big movements and so we could see on Amazon, we're already well past 10 o'clock, and while SPY is dropping, which is what we saw here, Amazon's continuing to hold up. However, where we start to get something is when we start here, where we start making uh, lower highs. So we're not coming up nearly as far as we were before, and we're also starting to see some topside wicks. So let's let this play out a little bit more. And so right here, we can start to see, we start to drop, and, and this is where we want to start taking entries because if we look at market net flow at this point, so now this is around 1048, we can start to see that on mark, with market net flow, we're really, puts are really starting to pull away. Now we're still in tight consolidation on SPY and that's one nice trick you can use if you're trading SPY holdings or underlying holdings across the market, whether it be SPY, QQQ, or IWM. You can actually reference the SPY chart here, so you don't need to have it up in another window. You can have it uh, up here in Market Net Flow to give you an idea of what SPY is doing. And because puts are starting to pull away, and now we're actually starting to see a drop here. We're starting to see, not only are we dropping, but we're starting to see it on higher volume. Now, we don't just want to enter because, as you can see, the last time we touched this area, we had a major buy-up, but we do want to start trying to time our entry. So now, if we see us pivot back on lower volume which is what happens right here and we get this we, so we pivot back on lower volume on this candle and then we immediately start to sell off here now it still looks a bit choppy however notice up here we've been making we had this this area of consolidation we haven't been able to come up even though we're still within this consolidation we haven't been able to come up as far so this tells us that buyers are losing momentum which is also confirmed with market net flow. So at this point, you can start trying to take an entry somewhere around here. Now, if you if you take an entry, uh, and I, I recommend using limit orders for this type of consolidation, uh, you wanna make sure that your stop would basically be above the highest pivot point. And so if, if we get on, on limit orders, say somewhere around here, uh, we can actually, we start to see Amazon 
sell off. Now, even if you miss this initial drop, that's perfectly fine. What we want to do is we want to start waiting for it to come back up a little bit uh, again. And we should see, you know, if, if sellers are going to be in control, we should see it pivot back up on lower volume. And actually, this is what we get right here. So we can see these three candles. So we have this steep drop off. So we see momentum starting to build, seller momentum starting to build, where we drop off. We've now broken this low, which is a good sign that sellers have taken over. And then we get bought back up on lower volume. So now a great entry, we have the bottom of this candle. So if you are more inclined to mark it in, if you didn't set limits back up here because you didn't recognize this initial consolidation, which is perfectly fine. Uh, and, and again, we want to check market net flow to confirm puts are indeed still moving up. This, I what, what you can do is when you see this lower volume put on the next red candle we get, if we break past the, the bottom of the, the green candle, then you can actually mark it in. And so let's let this play out. And right here, yep, so right here on this candle, as this candle broke past the close, excuse me, the open of this green candle. So as we broke past here, you could actually mark it in at this point to try to catch your entry because we had a lower volume pivot. And sure enough, you get extra confirmation that you made the right move because this next candle forms and it forms on higher volume. So let's let this play out and we'll see how we drop here. And so we just get a massive drop. So the reason we did that is because we had our initial consolidation, no good entries. Then we started consolidating again and this is on and this zone wasn't able to come up to the previous tops which showed these wick rejections so we knew that we sellers were beginning to take over and then on top of that we can see that when we got bought up it was all on lower volume down here so this candle most likely this is what the safest entry would have been now if you're more of an aggressive trader you could have tried to take some sort of limit order up in this area right here However, the break of this would have been the most optimal entry. And again, we have that confirmation, nothing new here. Net push just keep increasing while net calls keep, they're relatively flat, honestly, they're not diminishing too much, but the reality is net puts are, are but net put buying is driving this move up as opposed to call selling, which would be bringing those calls down. But I also want you to pay attention as this fall occurs, Look how steep this is. This is just a dramatic fall, right? And we don't want to chase into this if we missed it. But again, just going off of what we talked about, we want to wait for a pivot. Now, one thing you can do is you can measure how steep this decline was. And this, this is a good notification on how to, how to know if we're running out of momentum. So if we take our Fibonacci and we just measure it from the top pivot to the bottom pivot, we can see that we had this this whole decline. We see buyers step in in this area, right here. That's shown by these wicks. And then, when we start, when we pivot up and we get our first red candle, we we uh, where it still looks like buyers are coming in. However, this wouldn't be a bad risk. Now we're we're bumping, we're falling off the 38.2 percent line, which is actually indication that we still have a strong downtrend. So at this point, you can get in on the first red candle. And if you even want to give it another candle, that's fine too, to at least, at least we start breaking past the open of this candle. Now this did get bought up. However, it's not a reason to get out. But despite that, if you were to get out your exit, if you were, shouldn't be till, until you were to actually cross above this candle, if you were entering on this pivot. Now, as we start to see it drop down, we want to see that momentum continue. And this is a great indication that that momentum will continue. This is also another good reason to get on the candle because this is called a bear hammer. And sure enough, the downward momentum continues. However, as we get down here, this is what I want to point out. And this is how you can tell that we're starting to lose momentum. Doesn't mean to, to run away from the trade just yet, or doesn't mean that, that things are going to reverse just yet. But it does mean that we need to start being careful because notice how we had this huge fall right and then which we can measure in fibs and then we pivot up barely make it past three three eight point two but now on the next fall and let me switch back to my crosshair here so let's let's take fibonacci and let's measure this one on this next fall we don't make it nearly as far i mean we still get a, a decent trade if we take this trade uh on from off of this pivot and and take it back down to just playing the momentum that we had building up 
we still get a decent trade. Now we would exit when we see these wicks forming, holding us higher. And then as we end up moving higher here, let's see how far back we pivot. And this is just something to pay close attention to. So in this case, we actually, okay. So this was the end of our pivot and we actually get between 61.8 and 78.6, which means that buyers are now becoming stronger and sellers are becoming weaker. And if we take a look at market net flow, we're not seeing very, so if we look here, this is right around 1236. So let's go back here. This is right around 1236. Puts are still increasing, but it's not as much of a steep rapid increase that we saw before. It's starting to sort of level off here. Now, again, it doesn't mean that the trend is over. It's just we need to be cautious here because we need to be aware that the trend is weakening. And that's what I'm talking about here is how to read momentum, how to use price action to read momentum. And you can see things are really starting to slow down. The sellers are no longer to push it down nearly as strongly as they did prior to this. So we have this steep decline. We have another steep decline. Now we're just kind of slowly falling down. Now, in theory, you could still take puts here, but again, we need to be cautious and we need to have, I would even recommend exiting once we get to previous support, which would be if, if we're talking about previous support here. So if we were to take an entry somewhere up here, we'd want to consider getting out somewhere around here at this previous support, right? We don't want to be too risky at this point because based off the small candles and the way we're struggling to move down and the way, and we keep seeing buyers push us up. Now we, sellers are still in control, but we're certainly losing momentum. And, and also I want to point out, so this decline was really steep. This decline was steep. This one is far less steep, right? So uh, we definitely see indications that, that the trend is starting to weaken significantly. Now, as we get down here, let's see what happens. And we can actually measure this next pivot using Fibonacci's when we get to that point. And we can see here, okay, so we just stopped right here, this weak, this weak angle, nowhere near as steep as it was before. And then we're chopping around. And now at this point, we're looking to see if we can make another low, lower low, right? This whole time we've been making lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high. All of a sudden we have a higher low and all of a sudden we're chopping around a whole bunch. So at this point, we really should not be looking to take any more puts at this point. And then that's another thing that's notable is whenever we do try to push down into this area right here, look how the strong, the strong wick form, right? And even though this is a red candle, and even though this is red, a red volume bar, that volume, that significant volume came in on this wick, which might be hard to see. Let me zoom out here. So we can see the candle on this wick was very long and the volume came in much higher, which is ind an indication of stopping volume. And then immediately after that, we have this very bullish green engulfing candle, which basically engulfed all of this prior price action. So at this point, we should no longer be looking for puts. And I want to point that out, that even though puts are still in control, and if we look, this is around 227, puts still are in control. And if we go over to 227 here, uh, but they're flat and calls are flat as well. We're not seeing any big movements here. We're not seeing anything that's telling us, okay, we're going to get another push down. If anything, we're, we're seeing things stop. We're seeing things really slow down. So now what we want to look for is a trend shift. And a trend shift basically means, are we going to make a higher low and a higher high? Is market structure going to shift along with all this weakness that we're seeing? And I wouldn't recommend taking an entry here. You could, you know, you can take a counter, what would be a previous counter trend entry. If you are a more aggressive trader, you could try to take limits off of this area, limit calls off of this area. And sure enough, this is what happens. We make a higher high, right? So we broke above these highs. And then what we'll also start to see here is do we make a uh, higher low? And let's see what happens if we hold this area. Yep. And there we go. So we made our higher low. So at this point is why we should be looking for calls because we have the higher high, we get pushed back down on, on uh, and nothing significant here. And it does look like 
sellers were still trying to push us down on this candle but then as soon as we see this this bull candle form you could even take a market call off of this because at this point we structure has changed completely and there's been no notable changes in market net flow that would make us think otherwise and remember options flow is great volume is great but price action is always king and the price action shows us that we weren't going lower than this area that there are a whole lot of buyers waiting down here to push us higher so if you were to take a market here you could take it on on the break of the body or the break of the wick and you could actually get a decent move out of that you could actually get a couple points out of that now as soon as you see this this doji right here form along with these top side wicks so in this area up here that would be your cue to close the calls but at this point things have shifted and now really it's just a matter of seeing uh and so here we go again we made a higher low higher high and we're really looking to see if this area is still holding now we're getting close to the end of the day and actually the market did just close so you wouldn't be taking any entries there but i just wanted to point out how we could see that momentum shift so just to recap we have our initial consolidation and let me just kill the replay here we have our initial consolidation failure to move higher failure to move lower getting bought up all of a sudden we have lower highs forming so this could be entry number one right here then we drop down we have a lower volume pivot up as this candle breaks this could be your second entry we have a very steep decline so this is rapid decline and then we have some strong buying indications here and but still not enough to create a, anything like a, a higher high right but it is notable because things do start to slow down because then when we drop here we we make uh the low that we had so this low to this low was was a much wider range than uh than this low to this low and so again we do make a lower high so it's still a downtrend but then all this action right here is just weak price action weak candles and we're just sellers have essentially lost all the momentum and that's what i'm referring to here and then eventually we make off of this this level right here we hold we make a higher low of course we made a higher high right here which actually corresponds with if we look back here let's see if i can draw this this level right here so which actually goes back to these wicks right so this level is still acting as resistance but then once we blow past it it turns around and acts as support so anyway those are just things to watch out for as you're trading and using market net flow in conjunction and I just want to show an example of what I mean by things being flat. This is flat movement early on. This was significant movement, right? We're seeing significant changes and then things go flat. And if we look at July 20th, 22, this is a great example of what significant changes would look like, right? So we have a lot of crosses here. We have big trend shifts with, with uh, calls rising rapidly. Even though puts are rising, we see this, this big price changes. Calls go flat. Uh, puts continue to rise but then go flat and then when we see puts rise we actually see puts cross the spy price line which is an indication of a bearish shift and then we see calls selling off which again would be put entries but this is what i mean by significant changes the price action we were i mean the net flow that we were just looking at while it was significant early on it goes flat and at that's this point this is where it's crucial that we learn how to read candles and and volume to help us determine what's actually going to happen in the future so anyway uh this like i said this is going to be one of many price action videos i just wanted to point this out because it was a great trading day friday had several successful call outs and uh hopefully if you traded you had a great day as well and i appreciate you watching